the goal or the intention is to find or to inspire the next generation of studio owners. Okay, not scare them. Not scare yeah, them. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe a little honestly, bit. Honestly, a little bit because people are like, is this for me or is it not? Yeah. You know, we don't want them to waste two hundred thousand dollars to find out they don't want to be a studio owner. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so a little bit, a little bit. Welcome to Frame One. I'm Dryson. Today I'm hanging out with Dustin and AJ from Twelve Midnight. First off, thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, so Twelve Midnight, you guys do a lot of uh, video, you do motion, but you've worked for clients like Dis- uh, Discover Card, uh, Callaway, Dickies, Disney Channel, uh, a bunch of other odds and ends as well. So kind of the goal of Frame One is to talk about the emotional journey you guys experienced going from, you know, startup to where you are here today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I understand you guys are four years, four and a half years old now? Yeah, so, yeah, we're in our fifth year right Fifth now. year, that's yeah. got to be pretty yeah. exciting. Yeah, we actually have, like, this kind of joke about that because we did a three-year anniversary party, and then we had this whole, is this fourth, fifth? We're, <laughs> we're in our fifth, we just had our fourth, so, yeah, we, uh, we're, yeah, in our fifth year. Dustin likes to round up. I'm a conservative, <laughs> I'm a conservative one. Oh, I love it. By by the time this airs, it'll be five. It'll yeah. be fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so what I want to kind of do is just kind of walk through like the first startup company, how 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 it transformed. Uh, but Dustin, as I understand, this isn't your first video company. You had Intro Retrospect when you're back in Iowa, yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, so I'm curious between that agency to what you're doing now, what's how does that feel different starting the Studio Twelve Midnight? How it is today? Yeah, I mean, back then I was like fresh out of. I started that in college, honestly, yeah. and it was just a way I got a camera and started filming weddings. Yeah, and made that. That's what it was. I think we were, ended up three years in that we were doing about twenty five weddings a year or so, um, which was a lot, especially in the north. You know, you only get six months of the year. Yeah, in Iowa. it's like yep. got to hit it when the time's right, and there's a season for it. Yep. So uh, it's like every weekend, sometimes twice a weekend, filming weddings, and really like. I was very green. Uh, I, I figured out what my camera was like in that moment. Like I was able to get on the camera. I got a ton of reps on the camera. I knew how to change things quickly and go to different light settings. Yeah. But like really, I knew absolutely nothing about how to run a business. So it was really just let's get that video production filmed, edited out the door, and get paid for it, and do the next one. I didn't really know, you know, what we were doing, and then we'd buy gear. Yeah. Whenever we could upgrade, right? Right. Right. So, yeah, I guess, like, comparison now, we have a lot more, like, thought goes into what we're doing. (laughs) Um, And we definitely have a lot more conversations and strategy behind it. And it's, like, just learn over the course of those learning experiences. Like, I've learned a lot what not to do. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I mean, that was more of, like, a side, on the side of other things that I was doing. But I was still practicing my craft in my full-time jobs at that moment. So I was working at a software company at the time and then went to another agency, Gigantic Design, after that. And that's really like where I kind of was like, I really want to have my own thing someday. Yeah. But I also knew, um, you know, that I wasn't the one that wa- – I didn't want to know anything about the numbers. I didn't – Right. I was not a numbers guy. I just want to create. Yeah. yeah. Just How'd that work create. out? Uh, it worked out when I met AJ. But. <laughs> no, I mean, we just got out yeah. of a, uh, a call with bookkeepers like yeah. 30 minutes ago. Yeah. So, oh, now, so now I'm in the numbers. Now he knows the yeah. numbers too. Yeah. We need, I feel like it's like a beer time talk for that. Yeah. Like, uh, we don't, I don't like numbers either. I'm yeah. really so, not that my so thing. It's like, hey, just tell me, like, can we or can we not? Am I broke or are we, yeah. Are we okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Well, let's go back to the, the pre incubation period yeah. of 12 midnight. How did you guys meet? Oh, it's a really bizarrely <laughs> random meeting. We, um, I moved to Fort Worth probably. I mean, we moved to Fort Worth it's about the almost same six time, years yeah, ago. about yeah. six years ago. And uh, my wife and I sold a house in it from a nearby. We were in DFW, but we were in a different city for like ten years. Yeah. And I, I knew I wanted to come to Fort Worth, so we sold the house and we were we simplified and went to a uh, uh, an apartment uh, right here in the heart of the city. Uh, just been built, really, really nice place. And, and in fact, it wasn't built yet. There were a lot of, like our building was done, but the place was basically under construction. Yeah. yeah. And I think Dustin may have been one of like two other people that lived in the whole place. <laughs> yeah. It's and, like a resort. We lived to ourselves. Like it was just like a literal it, resort to ourselves. It, the the like. first like six months was glorious. Yeah. It was like <laughs> living in a resort by yourself. And, uh, you know, we both, we both have dogs and we were walking the dogs one day and just 
start talking. Du- if you've ever met Dustin, you know he'll strike up a conversation with you and find some kind of common ground. So <laughs> I, I, I've known you for all of like 30 seconds in person. I, yeah. I, I get that sense yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, you got a dog. Cool. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's hang out. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Much, yeah. So you guys started talking, hanging out, and it just happened that you're both interested in video? Uh, yeah. I mean, that was like what he was saying is that we just started talking about music, really. I think that was probably like our first like connection. Yeah. Because we both really like a lot of the same artists and a lot of the same music. <clears throat> and then AJ was just like, yo, you want to go get a beer? Yeah. I think it was that same night. And so I was like, I went out with him and his wife, Amanda, and we just hung out, became friends. And then I think like a week later, he said, yo, you should come to this place called Black House. Uh, it was here in the city. And at the time, like moving to Fort Worth when we moved here was perfect timing. Like, all of the arts and all the media stuff was just blowing Kick up. It off. Yeah. And so I moved here to get away from all of that. And I was doing the video stuff and I was doing a lot of client work and I was just exhausted from it a little bit and not really sure what direction I want to go. Um, and hadn't met my now fiance. So I was like, I'm going to move. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to move like what I'm, you know, I'm in Iowa. I loved the guys that I worked with. I loved even some of the work that we did, but I was just really like, I felt ceilinged a little bit. Like I wanted to get out of Iowa and yeah, try to yeah. try to go chase some big things. There, there's not a huge video market for the caliber you're doing now yeah. in the upper yeah. Midwest. Right, yeah. yeah. And I mean, like that was the hardest part was I left left a lot of friends and family behind to come down here. But yeah, whenever we uh, met like that, that week, he said, yo, let's go to Black House. Let's go check this place out. And I was like, what is that? It's a house. And we go, these people literally have their house painted black. You go inside and it's like a little market. And there's like... All these uh, people selling prints, there's people selling art, there's people selling whatever. And so I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like the next couple days later, he goes, yo, let's go to Black House again. And I was like, okay, well, it's like, well, now it's like 9 p.m. And we yeah. went the other day at like noon. Like, what is this place? So we go and it's literally just a party. Like they have <laughs> like DJ. It was just awesome. And it was all these people in the arts community. And it was like a very community driven thing. Um, so it was really, really cool. And it like gave me an opportunity to kind of start photographing some of that, that party atmosphere, that hangout atmosphere. Yeah. And really that's like kind of what spark re sparked that thing for me. Um, and then, yeah, like a year and a half after us hanging out and going to a lot of the different, um, art media, um, you know, city type things, we, we ended up just talking about this idea. And I think I called him on the way back from Iowa and I was like, yo, I think I got a name. And we and we started talking through it, and then we ended up with Twelve Midnight. Um, so I mean, there was a long list before then. Yeah, <laughs> and, and just to back up, like, not that this is not a uh, an episode about Fort Worth Black House, but it's kind of a bizarre thing to even try to understand. It was it was almost like just a communal space. This, this family lived there, uh, Noel and Sarah, and they wanted to create a space for their friends and people in the city who created art who uh, did crafts, who were musicians. So, so, they, so they would do, ass. yeah, so it they would do, cool. like Dustin said, we went to probably some kind of local arts gallery, basically in this bottom floor of their house. And then like a week later, it's like a, a fucking house party with hundreds of people there yeah. and DJs. <clears throat> I have some cool photos. I can give them to you. We can <laughs> put them up and be like, There we go. There we go. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so he was like, what is this place? And I was like, I don't know how to explain it. I just got, you just got to come with me. Just trust me. Leap of faith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you guys are talking. Twelve Midnight comes to be. Why? Why Twelve Midnight? Where would that name come from? Well, so that was like my my boss and mentor from Iowa, Tom Culberson, was who's a uh, partner at Gigantic. He was always like giving me shit, like burning the midnight oil, you know. Because when I actually worked at a software company before that, and he was my boss there. Yeah. Um, and they have a really really unique story as well, but we won't get into that now but. Right, right, right. <laughs> so he basically like at the time said hey i want st- i'm gonna start an agency um but i'm doing this stuff on the side and it's called rally collective okay and so at eight to five i'm doing the software stuff i'm working on I'm the videographer editor at the software company and then after five o'clock i go home do whatever go skateboard go go eat whatever go home and then at eight nine i'd start working again on rally collective stuff and so tom would stay up at 11 because he's same thing he's like burning the midnight oil and so it was always this thing of like this midnight oil and like always just like kind of doing that and then we started talking about like midnight being the time of day that's like 
a lot of people are still up, but also some people are in bed. So it's like the next day, but it's the same day. Yeah. So it's like this in between point. And so yeah, we just were you know twelve midnight just came to be. And it just that, had that yeah. beautiful ring to it. Just sounded good. It yeah. Sounded right. It's very yeah. long. Um, which yeah. Was which, perfect for which they did a good stuff. job like designing the brand yeah. because of that. So. Yeah. It was and, and and there was another point too. Like I I'm a to back up again a little bit. I did not come from video production world at all. When we met, I was in finance. Okay, but I was that's like, a good relationship. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, uh, I listened frustrated. to a lot of Gary V at the time. True. Like, yeah. so that's why he's like, find somebody who is good at what you're not. Right. Right. Hundred yeah. percent. But I was like a frustrated art kid, you know, I, who stumbled his way into a finance gig and did it for like 13 years. And so I had a really flexible schedule when we met. Um, and uh, my, I tend to do. When I am like making anything art wise, it's usually late. Like if you follow me on Instagram or something, it's you're gonna see my posts at midnight, yeah. one, one a.m. Yep. Uh, it's I don't know why. It's that I have clarity. I have some headspace at that time. Nobody's, nobody's just emailing me or sending so, me yeah. slacks. Nobody's bothering. Uh, and so it kind of fit for that too. And so Dustin just came. I don't know where he came from, but uh, Dustin came up with the name, and I was like, it's perfect. I love it. I love it. So you guys started this this company together. Uh, at that point. What was your confidence level that, yeah, we're going to be crushing it. We're going to do, like, to the moon. Did, th- wh- how did you guys feel day one? I mean, I always, like, I'm always, like, I know, like, I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? So I think, like, I didn't know how fast it would grow. But, you know, the the first day I was like, yeah, we can do this. We can figure it out. We can make videos. We can make money doing this. And then we sold, like, our first set of, like, 10 videos for, like, Three thousand bucks, <laughs> and then we started doing it. And I was and that like, "Project spanned a year." Yeah, like I didn't know about how to price anything. I didn't, you know, and like I when I was doing wedding videos, it was just like package, here's right, a package, right. here's this. Yeah, I'll do this. It's I'll... it's rinse and repeat the same thing every yep. weekend. Done. And then you start doing brand work. It's like, what do, what do you guys need? Well, oh, that's a little too much for us. And you know, okay, well, we'll, we'll do whatever because we want to just do the work, right? You know? So um, that first year was definitely start up, like growing, hungry. You know, fully, yeah. yeah. Straps, and we didn't. I mean, we didn't. I mean, I th- feel like this is a thing that entrepreneurs say a lot, but we didn't pay ourselves for a while. Yeah. You know, thankfully, we were both in a position that, you know, we we could pay the bills, and we had jobs that paid the bills or most of the bills, and so we were able to, you know, the first six, twelve months, really take the, in- the income that we did receive and put it right back in the business. You know, yeah. we 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 got a bank account, we yeah. got a small credit card, and we bought a. A camera we and, a, that and the lens <laughs> and paid that bitch off in like yeah. six months and maxed, uh, it, maxed it out. Had a little right bit of money yeah. left in the bank. Uh, but it was, you know, it was, we were fortunate to be able to do that, you know, because we did have some flexibility in our schedules. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was confidence level wise. I, it's hard to go back, you know, to that person that long ago. But uh, I, I think Dustin and I's one of our biggest strengths can also be a weakness sometimes and it's what he said like we're hyper confident in the things that we can achieve things um but it's not like pride it's just because we know we're gonna figure it we're gonna do whatever you, it you takes you have the drive to we put will in the time stop. energy yeah. whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah no i that that i love that uh so contrast you know where you are today you know versus five years ago how have things changed man um immensely i mean things have changed immensely it's been <clears throat> like there's a lot more of creative strategy that goes into what we do we have we have a whole team now and so like having a team is one of the hardest things was having to let go of control when aj and i first met he didn't know really anything about video and he actually started shooting photographs and then that inspired him to get into film and okay he started doing some film stuff and then I actually saw him. I had. I used to work like in this cabinet industry, and I was like, "Yo, I need somebody to draw me this door. I I cannot draw." And so he draws a door, and I'm like, "Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> like, this is really good." So uh, he started doing the art and the drawing, and the painting, um, and got back into that as well. But yeah, I mean, it was like there was a lot of the time where it was like a lot of the having to do the video work was teaching AJ like how this works and what Premiere, and so it was a lot of that at the at the jump. So. Then having to let go of control was like I was directing, I was shooting, I was editing, I was. It's a lot, and it's hard because you have like when you shoot your own thing and then you put it out there, you know kind of what the footage is, and so then it's like okay, shoot this and then try to describe it to somebody else to take care of and edit. Um, like having to take a step back and be more like, um, you know, thoughtful about how you approach somebody and telling them. 
that what they've done is close but not right or something like that, you know? Yeah, how do you guide somebody <clears throat> without, like, you know, just crushing their dreams? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's It's been, like, a really good experience to, to, like, learn that and understand. But it's also one of those things that was an extremely hard thing yeah. for me. But as soon as I started letting go of control of one thing, like, things started falling into place. So I started realizing, like, the more I can, like, trust others to do, yeah. then the more we can do as a whole. You're, you you are freeing yourself up to actually focus on things and grow things and push things versus having to, like, be a bottleneck for yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. I love and, it. Yeah, it was just one of those moments where we were, like, you know, now we look at it and we have – today we just – literally before I was coming in, we just got a new contract back that we were our ninth person, including AJ and myself. So Did seven you imagine others. you're going to have seven employees when you started this thing? Uh Yes, I no. said twenty five, and he's like, "That's a lot." Yeah, <laughs> but it is a lot. It, I was like, uh, you know, now I'm like, lot. maybe we go like you know that twenty five to fifty range, you know, like, yeah. but I don't know, like I'm, yeah, yeah. I, we from is there the big, a limit to scaling? I guess is the question. I don't think I don't so. Know. It's like I think we'll know when like things are right, you yeah. know, and yeah. I think it maybe like we'll scale up and down a little bit, like That's in fair. that range. I, I think the but, limit is like dependent on um, like quality control, right? Yeah. Making sure you've got the right people in the right positions and that, you know, you're not scaling things too quick, that it's, that the work is suffering. Right. Yeah. But outside of that, you know, I don't think so. I, I, it can be as big as we want it to be or are able to, to do it. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's really a necessarily a limit, at least for what we do. You know, we do a lot of brand work, but we, we want to expand into a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Um, so on the team thing from the very beginning, we knew Dustin and I had talked about that we wanted to build something bigger than ourselves literally since day one yeah we we've said that and so uh we definitely ima- it, i didn't imagine it to be the way it is or to be as quick as it was and all it, all the things that go along with it but we always wanted it to be uh, big. bigger not even big just bigger than us bigger That's than awesome. us yeah we wanted Some, it to be the, its own like living breathing thing a place for like people to come and like really be able to flex a little bit of what they know and then also come up with some cool ideas for yeah. companies you know it's always like <clears throat> we're always gonna have to do you know some of the work that we don't like like yeah. no matter where you're at or what you're doing like but at the same time there's like a really cool way to approach that type of work and be creative with it yeah a lot of times so it helps you get ready for some of those bigger clients like that come in and you're really trying to upsell on the dollar why there's so much value there um and then that's prepping you for those moments. So, you know, that is the perfect segue to my next question. I want to throw back <coughs> to way back in the early days at 12 yeah. midnight again. Uh, you had those, those $3,000 clients lasted for a year. It's just, it's yeah. just a grind. Uh, how did you go through like weeding out and starting to like uh, step up to the, the, the caliber you're doing now? Yeah. I mean, we still ch- are challenged with that. I think like there's a lot of times where even, you know, the big name clients always don't have the big name budgets. Yeah. Um, and so it's always a little bit of that. Like, is it financially worth it? Is it, you know, or is it something that will help us get that next thing? Yeah. And so I think that's what we always kind of like ask ourselves, like, is this one that we want to chase or is it not? And I think you have to be a little honest with yourself and not really look at the dollar amount all the time, but you have to balance it because, we got to make sure everybody, all the other seven people are eating as well. It's a lot of stress, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it definitely is. I think, like, you you know, you really have to just know, like, where with AJ knowing the numbers, like, it makes things a lot more clear. And so we know what our goals are. Yeah. Uh, we know what we have to hit from a sales perspective. And we know how do we get that. Well, we go through recurring clients, new clients. We have a little bit of a strategy. It's yeah. still something that's still being developed because him and I – have finally the past year really gotten to be able to do some real business development. Yeah. Um, so that's why we've been able to grow a little bit quicker. Yeah. So it's, f- it's been kind of, it was such like a springboard. It happened like so fast and so, because we, you know, we went at it really, really hard and it started working and we had other jobs at, at first yeah. and then, um, yeah, it became a full time thing very, very quickly. And then we started needing, you know, other people to do the work and it's like, we're developing all the systems, processes, figuring out accounting and invoicing and marketing and, and everything else that goes along with it along the way. You know, we didn't know. I had a personal finance background, not like yeah. I had never started a business before. Yeah. So, uh, but we knew. It's the same thing, right? I think numbers are numbers, yeah. right? <laughs> it's exactly the same. Uh, but it is, right? Like it's, it's simple. Some of the simple stuff is creating a budget. Like if you create a budget for yourself, 
you know, as long as you stick within it and you know you've got enough income to cover those things, it's the same with a business. Yeah. So it's not different in that sense. It's just it is different when you are responsible for, you know, seven other people. But, um, yeah, man, it's it's been a journey <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> since then. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the marketing and branding because the, the, there's just a polish. that Like you go to your website, you go to your Instagram, like it just feels nice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, was that something you guys had figured out day one? Or when did you kind of like start to come into your own, so to speak? Day one, like I said, we have to be brand forward. Uh, we can't afford it right now, so I'll make a quick little logo. Yeah. Uh, so I made this really bad 12 Midnight Visual Makers logo. We were trying to be all thoughtful. And, and it was this thing that was like it, it worked for what we were doing at the time, right? And it looked good enough. And so we knew, like, as soon as we had enough funding or if we had enough dollars in the door, uh, then we wanted to go back to Gigantic, who yeah. I worked with, um, and they we wanted them to do our brand. Um, luckily, you know, they're really good to us and gave us a lot of stuff for what we paid for. And, nice. Um, Relationships are everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I think, like, it wasn't, it wasn't cheap for us, especially at the time, um, you know, and I think, like, we really put everything that we had into the brand, into the website, and into, like, getting those assets that we need to be able to polish it. And then the polish has been the work over the past year and a half, uh, two years that we've had it. Um, so when we when we developed the brand, we brought uh, Chloe Gonzalez on as our brand manager, and she's now today our creative director. Um, and so her job and role has evolved a little bit from that in from that brand side. But she's the one that's really like developed and polished the brand to what it is today and utilized the assets. And that was just mainly her her sole focus. Yeah, I mean at the at the jump it was that and like our social page and making us look good on the outside. You know, making our stuff stand out, making us. Um, our messaging clear, you know, and, and putting our website in a position to be looked at as like, oh, well, this company's been around a long time when really at the time we had it. Been. Right, right. We, <clears throat> Dustin and I both are, we, we love branding. Um, <clears throat> I took a bunch of graphic design courses in school. I thought that's the direction I was going to go with my career. And uh, a bunch of adults told me I couldn't make money at it. And so I started second guessing it. And, uh, got offered a finance job right yeah and uh but going back i used to develop logos i used to like d literally hand draw custom typefaces and um do illustration all that kind of stuff right and so i understood and appreciated branding when things look good yeah and, and dustin came from a branding agency and we knew it was important right out of the gate to to stick out for people to understand a little bit just by looking at the website looking at um, you know, our Instagram or whatever that they kind of had a feel for who we were yeah. and who 12 midnight is, you know, and now it's not people still, I think sometimes think 12 midnight is us and they'll like, we'll get DMS and it's literally somebody else talking to them. Right. Yeah. But, um, it's, so it's kind of developed into this, its own persona. Right. Um, since then, but we knew right out of the gate, uh, and it was terrifying cause we spent a bunch of money that, uh, we really weren't ready to spend at the time, but we knew it was important. And, uh, thankfully, Dustin's a really good salesman. <laughs> so, you know, Gigantic, Gigantic did a great job with our design. We basically, they downloaded our brains and walked through a bunch of the things that were things we liked, references for other brands, other films, typefaces, colors, all these things. And uh, Eric Martins and, and Jay just did, like, an incredible job of representing all the things that we really, really liked. And then, yeah. to Dustin's point, Chloe kind of, with us has like walked it out so much farther That's since awesome. then internally so when you first saw that first logo like unveiled talk to me about that well i think when they showed it to us so eric martins he mentioned him um eric's the senior designer over there and he he had kind of been like yo i'm gonna give you a presentation like he didn't send me anything and this is my homie right he's like i'm not sending you anything like suspense yeah Ooh. and i'm like dang okay like he puts it on the screen and it's like you see the very first page and you see this little peak of a logo and you're like, oh, shit, like this is cool, you know. And I think that's one of the biggest things is I, I've said that to AJ from day one is like I just want to make cool shit. Like yeah. that's all I yeah. literally care about is I just want to make cool shit. I want to play a little golf. And I want to have a good life. You know what I mean? And so it's like that's really my goal personally. And so I think like from that moment they knew that about me i told aj that and then we saw that brand and i'm like this is cool that just hits home yeah it just, and yeah. so i was like as he's scrolling through it it was just i think aj and i were both like 
on the inside. I, th- I think we were in the same room at the yeah, time. We were together. And so we were like looking at it and we weren't like saying anything. And then at the end, we were both like, dude, this is Nailed awesome. It. Yeah. Like, this is exactly what we were talking about. Thank you. Like, this is perfect. And there's, there's a lot of little touches. We don't even have to get into that, you know, if yeah. you want to be cautious of time. But there's a lot of little touches in the logo that we can. You know that are very like thoughtful. on this logo here. It's actually like a, a sixteen uh, sixteen by nine like aspect ratio. Oh snap! On yeah, so they just they threw that in, and then like the colors from um you know the color bars and tone are like on a slate or whatever. Like we kind of took those colors and then made them like our own tones. Yeah, um, that were a little bit more cinematic feeling, and so that's kind of like a couple of little touches there. With it's that. amazing yeah. the amount of Easter eggs or just little thought processes that can go into a logo. Yeah, and we, we have a logo it. that we haven't even put out yet. Still that. They've gave us a while. Oh man, is there a rebrand coming out? No, no. I think I think it's just like one that we'll use for something specific that we don't know what it is. Yeah, we've kind of got some alternate logos. Um, A lot of people know us for this like TWLV one. one. It's really really cool too. Yeah, that one. Um, And it's I I don't really know why we did it. I think um, we both love like A24, and they always have a lot of fun with their logos. Yeah. And uh, but it's always the same one. But I think we told the, him like A twenty four Nike. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. make us that, but yeah. our own. Yeah. So yeah. he Eric developed several different logos, and we mostly use. There's like a couple variations of the main one, um, and then there is like the TWLV. But there's a couple like that we'll probably use for a different project. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I'm curious. So you have you have the new branding rolls out. You have someone spe- specifically developing your branding page and all on how all of Twelve Midnight looks. At what point do you feel like that first major milestone client came in the door after that man we were actually so the for the client that we did the 3000 video or i think it was like almost like a little closer to four but those 10 videos was actually for the city of fort worth visit fort worth okay and so um they asked us the following year to come down and shoot south by southwest for them snap and so I that's was an like, upgrade yeah mm-hmm. so i was like well let's not shoot south by southwest let's go like do some live let's turn some stuff around like next day same day type stuff yeah we had no reason, like, there was... You just did it. Yeah, we were just like, we weren't. We don't even sell that today. Like, we were like, this would be cool. Let's just do it. And I think that we learned that we don't want to sell that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it was like one of those things that was, we were, so, like, I think today we could absolutely smash that. Oh, we would kill it. But yeah. I think that at the time... We had no business. Infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, we didn't know. You know, we had two guys that we freelanced out, uh, John and Braxton, and then myself and AJ. And we had so we were switching. Everybody could edit. Everybody could shoot. And we were like rotating. AJ was managing everybody's time where they needed to be. And it was this thing that was just like we worked our asses off. Like it was. We were up until four a.m. like trying to finish edits and stuff yeah. for the, next the content. Day. Turned out great, and it, it. You know, I think one of the reasons people work with us is because we um, we give a shit about the impact yeah you know as much as we can control that um and so that they had they had great impressions the content looked good but it was a beating yeah. of a weekend because we we worked around the clock basically scratched and clawed for that oh, one yeah, yeah i uh, think i bet the beer that was our first really like little that. tiff yeah we had <laughs> our, our first, first little weekend. argument well, yeah. let's talk about not, not that tiff specifically <laughs> yeah. but when you have two business owners typically you have one person who's the implementer and one person who's the the the, the visionary so yeah. to speak is that ring true yeah, yeah that's i think so yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so uh it, it seems like kind of the job of the the, vision, the visionary you know run three run run free think of all these crazy ideas and the implementer's kind of like okay that sucks that sucks that sucks let's do this but in order to get that without hurting feelings it takes a lot of communication clarity and just open honesty yeah how has that relationship evolved for you guys over the years Man, I think we were really good friends first. Like, yeah. so we kind of had already known how to like speak to one another and like tell each other what we think. And we also always like had this music and art side of us that it's like all subjective. Yeah. So like sometimes you'd be like, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. like I think we learned how to communicate that. And like there's still times where it's like we'll get stuck on something, and you know we just try to like work through it. But I think like at the end of the day, we all know like none of that shit's personal. Um, and it's all just like we're trying to make something yeah. good and everybody's there for the right reason. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's like you have to kind of put that like pride aside or, or your ego and sometimes like pick your battles, you know. Man, I mean, um, it's, it's like any other close relationship. You know, you're going to disagree. You're going <clears> to <throat> uh, you have to communicate and the good and bad. And it's not always easy. Um, we don't always. Thankfully, we see eye to eye on a lot or we can make each other see eye yeah, to eye, yeah. you know. Um, but it does, it requires a lot of communication. And then, you know, when you, when you're a dick, 
just apologize just yeah. fucking own it and and it's squashed and over and it's not a big it. deal yeah. and you learn from it right and you know we've we've had we don't really fight but we've had moments where we disagreed on shit and yeah we uh i think thankfully we're both like empathetic people who you know want to move past it is you know and and create this cool thing together so we move past it <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely uh i'm curious as uh you're you as you're moving forward and hiring people and bringing people on uh making sure that people are in the right roles the right seats the right personality for the right right job how have you gone through and kind of just designed or developed uh 12 men to be what it is to make sure that people are all representing who you are what you want to be that's probably the hardest thing about the business uh like it's always a chicken and the egg yeah like scenario so back to the for like the first big client, like, you know, we were talking about that event is where we met our first big client actually was TX whiskey. And so like, once we started working with TX and started understanding like what their needs were, that's what we started basing a lot of our like strategy around because they were yeah. a bigger client for us at the time. We had only done a few projects with them, but then we had actually been called back and back and back. And so, yeah. you know, a lot of it was like, yo, let's, <clears throat> let's figure out what their needs are. Let's freelance some people you know, we hired Chloe to help with the brand, but everybody else, let's freelance them out until we can kind of figure out what we would need to yeah. make that happen. And then I'll, you know, that was a moment where I was still holding on to a lot of the control. I would do the edits and put it up, like making sure that the quality that we were putting out the door was what it, we, what we wanted it to be. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. And I think like, if you don't let me jump no, in here real me, quick, sorry. um, <clears throat> what I think what Dustin means by a chicken and the egg is like, that's the numbers part, right? Because, we were fully self-funded. We had like a six thousand dollar credit card limit, and we paid the, the state four hundred bucks for an LLC. You know, and that's we had a couple hundred bucks in the bank, and yeah. then we got you know that first project had a little bit of money, spent it on something else. You know, there's business is expensive. Um, people ask why everything costs so much. It's because everything else costs so much, yeah. right? So um, it's it is chicken and egg when you are self-funding because you need revenue to pay yourself and pay for the stuff and pay for adding on more people right yep but you can't you can't grow that without we're we're a service industry job in a lot of ways right we make more money by doing more work so i can't we can't go out and sell a job without someone to do the work so that's the chicken and the egg part is is you're constantly feel like you're chasing a thing um and i think the other thing that you were trying to get to is how the right people in the right seats i think that thing is it's always a best guess. And I think we've learned to trust our guts um, on on these things. Uh, what we've found works really, really well for us is referrals yeah. from people we trust. Yeah. Um, everybody at 12 Midnight Now was somebody we met personally by accident, by chance, um, or was referred to us somehow. Yeah. I think literally every person. Yeah, every single person right now yeah. um, is – through a referral. And that was the other thing when we started was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to go put, put out job postings. I want to headhunt. I want to figure out who do we want to be here and who wants to be here Yeah, more so than who wants a job. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Who's going to be passionate about the brand, the work, <clears throat> everything else, not just there for the Yeah. And it's a personality yeah. type, right? Cause you can be really, really technically good at what you do. And, but if you don't give a shit about this work, it's going to show, you yeah. know, and, and it's not, it's not an option for us, you know, and, and that sounds really tough. We're really not tough at all in person most of the time. Um, in the work environment, we're probably too, too, <laughs> too nice. lax, yeah. too nice. Well, some uh, people might say that. But. Yeah. But yeah. that's kind of a perfect segue. Uh, so when, when you have to kind of like relinquish control a little bit and kind of like trust these people to do their, their jobs and, and to, to run the vision, you know, uh, that is scary letting go of control like that yeah. to, to, to uh, delegate. Um, I had a question for this and I completely forgot what it was. Yeah. So I'm just going to talk, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, man. Uh, no, no. Um, but it's going back to the bottleneck thing. I'm curious, do you guys have any, had, when you were trying to relinquish control, let go of things, were you worried about suffering a lack of quality control that things would go downhill? Yeah. I think like that's been a big thing for us this past year is the, the team communication. Yeah. Um, we've been able to like have good moments of that. We've had moments where we've learned from it and had to communicate better. And we always, as a team are reminding ourselves, like you, you have to communicate to one another. Cause I think one of the biggest things with l relinquishing control is that nobody knows who's actually doing what, what? Yeah. yeah. So, and I think that's been one of the biggest things is we've been 
hey, you are the clear point person. You are the clear point person. You make the decision on this. You, you have to be clear about the communication because I think then everybody just – doesn't know if they should be making their giving their input making a decision or not and so yeah that's been one of the biggest things with relinquishing control it's been a a challenge um but yeah i think we're trying to find processes that work better to make that easier yeah i was gonna say that's that's where a lot of the time has gone uh it's kind of switched a little bit um as we've had more people we can't we can't offload the shit in our brains to them automatically right right yet (laughs) uh but uh yeah, maybe soon. Uh, do we want to have an AI conversation? I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> no, yeah. But get out but, of here. I don't want none of that. But it's it's you know finding ways to make commu- that communication easier, more streamlined. So it's using project management software, um, making sure that it works and that people are using it. Yeah. In notes, it's you know for like we use Slack for a lot of commu- uh, communication and just making sure that everybody's on the same page on how we communicate information about projects yeah. and where the shit is saved. And to Dustin's point, who's doing what, um, all that stuff has to be communicated and it needs to be over communicated because everybody thinks that other people, I think, understand them more than what they actually do. Yep. And so it's, you really have to over communicate to communicate enough, right. I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm curious, kind of going back there then, before you were able to relinquish control and, and help delegate those kind of things, uh, was there a bottleneck for quality control? Yeah. Did things start to slip because you weren't trusting people? Yeah. I mean, definitely. We've we've had, um, you know, interns. We've had a couple of hires that worked and some that didn't. And, you know, there's definitely some moments where, uh, you know, when one thing is not going right for a person, it was, like, causing a lot of stress yeah. and, and friction on the team. And so, um, you know, that is one thing that was – really the first time that we've had a big bottleneck and that was, you know, in the past year or so, but I think it was because we were adding so many people um, and everybody jives so well that you got to find that next person that can also jive. Yeah. Um, So you got to make sure like that it is a culture fit from that standpoint, that it is somebody who has the same drive and vision of what they want to do. And then also just somebody who's easy to work with. You yeah, know, I think like people that you are be the world's best artist, but if you're an asshole, I don't want to work with you. Yeah, if you're 100%. too stuck on your ideas or if you can't take direction or if you can't work in a team environment, then like it's probably not a good fit. Was it ever scary for you guys to start giving direction? Um, I don't think so. No. I mean, I think I think like I am better at that than I am at what at making videos or whatever yeah. sometimes. So I think like that for me, I can help get you to from point A to point B more than I can actually just go in and make it. I know like I'm, I'm good at that stuff, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are better than me, you know? So I think like from a direction standpoint, that's really where I feel like I can thrive because I don't, I, I can just come off the top with it, yeah. you know, if I need to. So, so the people is kind of your strong set. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we talked about that when I walked in and we we're chatting, you know. Well, and I so. think I think that <clears throat> that's created a bottleneck at times, right? Because people uh, on the team can become very reliant on the person who can figure that shit out very quickly, yeah. right? And so that's been that's been a big like emphasis for our growth the past year is everybody being less reliant on me, being less reliant on Dust- Dustin for sure. Yeah. Um, and and that's I think that's been a challenge for us of like letting go because it's hard when you know when you know the answer or you know how to find the answer in thirty seconds you don't really want somebody spending four hours on it but that four hours may give them the experience to figure this out next time in the same amount of time You're you would have literally right? investing in people yeah. and it's hard to see your people like struggle because you don't want them to you know what I mean but yeah. you you have to let them a little bit sometimes because that's where you learn. And I think that's one thing that I learned from Tom and Sean at Gigantic was like, I don't know, figure it out. Yeah. Oh man, I think we could go down like a, a three hour rabbit hole with this. Yeah. This is like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like getting really excited. I look at the clock. I went, no. <laughs> uh, so um, before I let you guys go, so the, like I said, the goal of frame one is to help inspire the next generation of studio yeah. owners, freelancers, um, if they want to make that jump. So I'm curious, uh, what piece of advice would you give those that want to either start a studio or want to go freelance? Yeah. Um, Man, I think I've had to like learn this. So I think this is a really good piece of advice because I think AJ like told me this probably a hundred times. But I think like you're gonna have really high highs and really low lows, and sometimes it's hard to see past the low lows. Um, so you need to make sure like you celebrate the wins 
and you f- you feel bad about the losses a little equally, yeah. you know? So I, I think, like, that's the biggest thing for me, taking that away and just, like, being like, yo, that one didn't work out. We're going to move forward. We're going to learn from it. We're going to do the next thing, and we're going to make it better. Um, so I think that's what you just have to, like, have that in you that you're going to continue and push on. It's not for everybody. It's definitely tough. But I think, like, if you want to do it, you can. The re- are the rewards worth it? Absolutely, dude. I think, I mean, we're here today talking on a podcast, you know, in the middle of the day. And I think that's what's, like, cool is that we do have a lot of freedom for our team. We work Monday through Thursday uh, as much as we possibly can. Um, but we work really hard on those days. So I think that's, you know, that is worth it. We get to set our own schedules. We get to do what we want to do. Um, but it comes with some added stress, you know, when you start paying a lot of people uh, it, it's it's scary sometimes. So you just got to, like, have somebody that knows yeah. that you're good. I, w- I would just add on to um, a couple things. Uh, you're, it's going to take more time and effort than you probably think it's going to take. Um, yeah. Just multiply it. Um, be, yeah, that, that mental resilience, that emotional resilience is super important. And just know you're you're going to have those lows and it's okay to feel bad. You're going to have those highs and it's okay to feel good and just don't take them too far and try to stay a little bit grounded in the middle because it's going to repeat. It's going to cycle. Um, I I would say the biggest thing, the biggest reasons for our success and take this for, you know, whatever you, whatever you want to, um, are we, we care about people. We care about our work. Uh, we do our best. We give a shit. We give a shit. We try to treat people really well with respect, we try to make sure that we are hitting for our clients on the work that we're doing, and it's 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 worked to this point, you know. And there's not like a silver bullet that I can give you. It, we did not have wh- whatever version of success we would call it to this point because it was given to us. It was fully earned with like, blood, sweat, and tears, and. If you do that and you care about the client, you care about people, I I don't see how you could fail at anything. Yeah. And I do want to shout out our team real quick. Yeah. So Dylan Wallace is our DP. Chloe Gonzalez, our uh, creative director. Alex Prudick Dennis, who you know, is yep. our senior motion designer. <clears throat> um, Todd Luther, he is our associate producer. Um, and what's a quick funny story about Todd, he was an intern with us. Uh, he applied for an editing internship, and he wasn't an editor. <laughs> and so we ended up really liking the kid uh, and brought him in as associate producer now. Um, and then we have John Warder, who's our uh, our senior uh, editor. And then uh, Jewel no- Noel, Noel, but Noel. <laughs> and she's our project manager. And then, is that everybody? Me and AJ? And then we just hired a new uh, designer, Kerrigan, yep. Kerrigan Sales. So. And I, I'm going to speak as, as frankly as I can. I bet it feels fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does, man. It does. I didn't miss anybody, right? I don't know. This, I that's really what, that's not. the problem now. There's so many people. That's... When you get the 2550, it's going to yeah. be like, all right, let's get the Rolodex. It, yeah. <laughs> we'll just flash their photos. If he <laughs> forgot you, it's not personal. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, AJ, Dustin, thank you guys so much for being here. I super appreciate it. And uh, thanks again for being a frame. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having us, man. Yep.